to comic book shops and bookshops. Take this advice, man, for reals. So recently I was watching You Got Mail by Nora Ephron, who's a female director that I enjoy. She directed Sleepless in Seattle, uh, Michael, and a few other movies that I enjoy. You Got Mail is one of them. Definitely a time period piece. Uh, I love the, the dial-up AOL. I love the idea of the chat rooms, something nostalgic for me now. But I wanted to watch that movie because all this conversations about comic book shops and what they're not doing, it just reminded me of that movie because that movie, if you're unfamiliar with it, basically is a, a character named Joe Fox and another character named Kathleen Kennedy. Now Kathleen owns the shop around the corner which is a small kind of independent book publishing uh, uh, business that she has. And Joe Fox is this big major discount book retailer. So it's almost like a Barnes and Noble versus a small shop bookstore, you know, Skylight Books or something like that. Shout outs to the homies. And the movie kind of revolves around this idea that she tries what she can and she puts up a valiant fight but nonetheless loses to the big discount bookstore. As a young man, I don't think I understood some of the things that I understand now and I, I didn't view that movie in the way that I did this time around, right? That's why it's always good to rewatch movies later on. That movie reminds me of kind of what's happening with the comic book retail shops and also what they're not doing. Like there's a scene where Kathleen is, she's already defeated, right? She's already closing down, liquidating all her shit and getting rid of her shop. You know, in her vulnerable state, she goes into the Fox uh, bookstore and sits down in the children's books area. And, you know, there's a team member there from Fox Books who's talking to a customer about a book, but she doesn't know who the author is and he doesn't even know the book. And then Kathleen Kennedy's like, I know the book, I know the author, you're not gonna get that book because it's out of print. And that's that piece that I'm talking about in comic book shops, like that's what's missing. Like if I go in there and say, yeah, I like Scotty Young, Someone should have told me about Bully Wars before I found it. But no one, no one seems to know those kind of things. You know what I mean? I, I had to do my own research and look at his website and be like, what the fuck is Bully Wars? And then go and find a copy. And that's one of the main components of what's missing, right? Like someone like, someone like me, like I'll tell you kind of what I like and then you can tell me, if you like that, try this, try that. I used to have a comic book shop like that in LA, but I don't live in LA no more. And so like out here, I've already gone to maybe 10 different comic book shops. None of them function that way. Out of the six comic book shops that I frequented in LA, only one shop had one clerk that actually read and knew about comic books. The rest of them were trash. But the second thing that that movie really drove to my head was the idea that like, did Kathleen really do everything she could to save her book? A big retailer needs to have a good price point. And they also need to have quantity, right? So like if Fox Books is supposed to represent something like Barnes and Nobles, Barnes and Nobles, you have to go through a major distributor. You have to have an X amount of books that they can purchase when they want them. They'll ask you to have 100,000 ready to go if they need them, but if they don't need them, then you just have 100,000 books that you can't seem to sell. And so she could have easily started going to more independent book publishers who can only mass manufacture maybe a small, you know, 10,000 copies of a book or so on and so forth. And that could have been an angle she could have went. Another thing would have been to carry the things that Fox Books wouldn't dare to cover because they're too edgy and too dicey. And that's kind of where the zines come in. We're like, a lot of comic book shops won't carry zines, even though a lot of zinesters are not opposed to having things on consignment, to have more unique things to the shop that they won't be able to find in a Barnes & Noble because Barnes & Noble won't carry zines, right? And so if Barnes & Noble won't carry a zine, you carrying the zine becomes a competitive advantage. Even if you don't sell it, but it's just the idea that you have this thing, you fill this need that Barnes & Nobles cannot and will not fill. And the other thing I thought about when I watched uh, You Got Mail today was Kevin Smith is real smart because that's the other thing I thought about like, the end of You Got Mail, she basically becomes, or she's going to become a children's book author. She's like, well, I'm gonna write my own book. If she knew so much about children's books and she had so many connections in that realm, why hadn't she already started publishing books and having like exclusive books only for her shop? You have to think outside the box. And one of the people that it brought to my mind was Kevin Smith when he started publishing his comics uh, under the secret stash 
you know, Banner and Secret Stash being the name of his comic book shop. So those are just some random thoughts that I saw when I was watching You Got Mail that made me really understand the parallel between kind of like, like that dilemma of like, yeah, there's this big massive entity looming over this small business, but nonetheless, small businesses can still find their competitive advantage. They just have to stop trying to be the big box retail shop, right? Uh, meaning that small bookshops, small comic book shops, they don't need to compete with Barnes & Noble. They need to differentiate themselves from Barnes & Noble. And you can do that with underground comics, zines. You can do that with reaching out to small publishers who don't have major distribution, right? That's, that's your competitive advantage right there. All right, you guys, if you haven't watched You Got Mail, if you don't know who Laura Efron is, check her out. She's a really good filmmaker. Sleepers in Seattle is a good one as well if you've never seen that. Beyond that, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Lights.